In this lecture, we're going to examine bond length and bond strength. Specifically, we'll define bond energy, discuss how it relates to bond length, and calculate some values using bond enthalpy data. Let's begin. The strength of the bonds within a molecule determines the stability of that molecule. Bond strength is measured as bond enthalpy, the enthalpy change associated when breaking a specific bond in one mole of gas phase molecules. While the exact bond enthalpies can be measured for diatomic elements, most bond enthalpy values are average values obtained from measurements from many different molecules containing a specific bond. For example, we could measure the strength of the carbon-chlorine bonds in tetrachloromethane, but to get a better idea of what the value is in other molecules, we'd need to measure the same carbon-chlorine bond in many, many other compounds. So once we've gone through all the trouble of collecting this data, what is it good for? I'm glad you asked. We can use bond enthalpy data to answer questions such as this. Which is more reactive, hydrogen chloride or hydrogen bromide? The bond enthalpy for the HCl bond is 432 kilojoules per mole, while HBr bond enthalpy is 366 kilojoules per mole. Because it takes less energy to break the HBr bond, it is reasonable to predict that hydrogen bromide is more reactive than hydrogen chloride. We can also use bond enthalpy values to estimate enthalpies for reactions involving molecular compounds in an application of Hess's law. This helps us answer certain questions before carrying out a reaction, such as, will this reaction be exothermic or endothermic? How large will the energy change be? When the energy needed to break bonds is smaller than the energy released from bond formation, we wind up with an exothermic reaction which would make a reaction vessel feel warm to the touch. When the energy needed to break bonds is greater than the energy released from bond formation, we have an endothermic reaction, which would make a reaction vessel feel cold to the touch. Taking the difference of the energy added and the energy released tells us how large the energy change will be. Let's see how to quantify this amount. First, we have to calculate the total energy that would be added to turn the reactant molecules into individual atoms since bond breaking is endothermic. Next, we calculate the total energy that would be released when these atoms combine to form the product molecules. Bond making is exothermic. Finally, we find the difference between the two quantities to estimate the reaction enthalpy, delta H. For example, if we wanted to calculate the enthalpy of reaction when hydrogen and oxygen combine to produce water, we see from the diagram that we'd need to add enough energy to break two hydrogen-hydrogen bonds and one oxygen-oxygen double bond. Adding the information for the enthalpy values, we see that breaking these bonds cost us 2 moles times 436 kilojoules per mole plus 1 mole times 498 kilojoules per mole equals 1,370 kilojoules. This gets us to the top of the energy plateau where we have six gas phase atoms to combine. Making bonds releases energy. Referring back to the diagram, we see that we need to make four hydrogen-oxygen single bonds, and at 460 kilojoules of energy released per mole of bonds, this gives us four moles times 460 kilojoules per mole equals 1,840 kilojoules. Since more energy is released than we had to put into the reaction, this is an exothermic process. Let's try another example. To calculate the delta H of reaction for the combustion of methane, we need to start by drawing Lewis structures of the reactant and product molecules to identify which bonds are broken and which bonds are made during the reaction. Each bond in the Lewis structure represents one mole of bonds. Next, count up how many of each type of bond we need to make or break. We see that we need to break four carbon-hydrogen bonds at 413 kilojoules per mole of bonds. We need to break two oxygen-oxygen double bonds at 495 kilojoules per mole of bonds. We need to form two carbon-oxygen double bonds at 799 kilojoules per mole each. 
and we need to form four hydrogen-oxygen single bonds in water at 463 kilojoules per mole of HO bonds. This gives us an overall negative 810 kilojoules, which is an exothermic reaction. Covalent bond length is the distance between the nuclei of two atoms that share electrons in a covalent bond. Published bond lengths are average values obtained from the measurements of many different molecules that contain bonds between the same pairs of atoms. You can compare bond lengths and bond enthalpies between the same two elements to determine a relationship between bond length and bond strength. In general, we'll see that as bond length increases, bond enthalpy decreases. Therefore, longer bonds tend to be weaker bonds. Let's try an example. To describe the relationship between the bond lengths and the bond enthalpies for single, double, and triple bonds between carbon atoms, I gathered the appropriate data from tables 10.3 and 10.4. We see that increasing the bond order from single bond to double bond to triple bond increases the bond enthalpy and shortens the bond length. As always, I'll leave you with the parting thoughts of the authors.